impairment is a, a condition um, that is uh, indicated by someone performing below uh, normative expectations on a, a cognitive domain or at least one cognitive domain. Um, and it is a uh, considered um, in many um, respects a potential precursor to dementia down the road. Um, in terms of what causes it, um, in the context of Alzheimer's disease, it's usually um, attributed to um, neuropathological changes in the brain. So the accumulation of things like amyloid and tau uh, in the brain and, and those uh, neuropathological markers um, also lead to uh, dementia conditions. So uh, those are just two neuropathological markers. There are other uh, neuropathological markers that could uh, also cause that as well. Uh, yeah, it's a good question. So uh, a mild cognitive impairment typically uh, um, impacts cognitive functioning in at least one domain of cog cognition. But uh, I think one important characteristic of mild cognitive impairment is that it's typically thought um, uh, to not be uh, so severe as to uh, impact daily life, actually. And so uh, people with mild cognitive impairment are uh, generally thought to be able to still continue to um, be able to complete activities of daily living um, and to live independently. Um, and that, that sort of, uh, that, that's the understanding of mild cognitive impairment. And I think one of the significant aspects of our work is that um, even though it's generally believed that people with mild cognitive impairment can live independently, um, we are finding that uh, people with MCI um, may actually perform worse on measures of decision making, uh, these very important uh, aspects of decision making. Uh, and so, it, it, in some respects, it could uh, challenge the notion that uh, people with MCI may be able to live completely um, uh, independently. Um, and so, uh, although it, we're not saying that everyone with MCI can't live independently, it's just that um, we're finding in our work that uh, these um, higher level decisions um, that could have an impact on um, uh, daily life, um, that people with MCI may perform lower. Um, so for this study, we were looking at a group of um, about 300 community dwelling older adults. And we um, wanted to assess the effect of MCI, mild cognitive impairment status on general decision-making. Um, so decision-making that could kind of extend to many different situations. And so to do that, we used um, a modified version of a, it's called the space. It's the short um, portable assessment of capacity for everyday decision-making where basically participants were read about this um, hypothetical scenario. And then they were asked questions to assess different um, kind of components of decision-making. So for example, their ability to understand what the problem was, to kind of appreciate why it was a problem, um, think about advantages and disadvantages to possible actions they would take, um, and identify consequences of each decision. And then they were um, rated on their answers. And the main finding of our study was that participants who um, were classified as having MCI performed worse on this measure of everyday decision-making than participants who are uh, classified as cognitively normal. I think there are a few different things that can be done. Um, so one thing is just thinking about kind of people who interface with older adults, whether that be family members or healthcare professionals, um, just kind of being aware of this and, um, you know, thinking about ways to maybe offer additional resources or just check in to make sure that the older adult um, does have an understanding of the decision that um, they're making. Um, family members, for example, could think about things like kind of early planning. You know, sometimes people might want to set up things like power of attorney for the future 
or, um, you know, think about that stuff early on before something like MCI um, sets in when decision making abilities might be compromised. Um, but as Dr. Han said, you know, we're not at all saying that all older adults with MCI can't make decisions. So we also want to emphasize that um, anyone interacting with an older adult in these contexts should respect their autonomy and make sure that we're thinking about kind of their best interests and valuing um, their input with these things. Yeah, so this is actually a study. Um, I think one of the uh, important, um, uh, I think one of the reasons why this study is uh, important is because uh, in previous work, uh, uh, we have found uh, the same finding, but in a pretty localized uh, community um, outside of Chicago, a large group of older adults. This, this is a study that essentially replicates this finding in three different locations throughout the country, actually. So uh, Indianapolis, um, San Diego and uh, Colorado. Um, and so uh, it, the scope of the study is much bigger. And in that sense, um, uh, it, it lends more support to this idea that uh, people with MCI might actually uh, have a tougher time with uh, decision-making. And so I think um, the scope of this is, is actually something that uh, is important. I think it's also important to um, know uh, we need to look at more diverse samples, actually. So this is in a still a relatively small uh, cohort of older adults. Um, we need to look and see if uh, these same findings actually um, bear out in other more uh, uh, representative samples of older adults. And uh, that's something that we're actively working on um, right now. I would just echo what Dr. Han said, definitely going to be important to replicate this um, in a more diverse cohort. But I think it's really exciting that we're seeing additional support um, for this idea that decision making might be uh, implicated early on. And so, yeah, excited to um, see that replicated.